In the lore of the Olympics, gold medal status is a pinnacle of a lifetime of hard work. But what goes on behind the gold medal is not often what it seems. Most people just see the athlete standing up on the podium, looking perfect, receiving their medal amongst adulation and adoration of the world. But in reality, there's much heartache and hardship behind the facade that many people do not see. According to Investopia.com, the International Olympic Committee requires that every gold medal contains a minimum of six grams of gold. So the majority of gold medals are actually 93% silver. But in 2008, that Olympic gold medal was 99% silver with six grams of gold. So the true cost of the Olympic gold medal from the Beijing Games was actually worth $606, according to the exchange rate during the Games. Not exactly the financial windfall that I'm sure all of you are expecting. Just goes to show you that behind every gold medal is a little bit of a secret. Not everything is what it appears to be. Let me take you back to 2007. We had two games left before they were announcing the Women's World Cup roster. I was a starting right back for the U.S. Women's National Team, and we were playing against Canada in a friendly. My task that game was to make sure that one of the best forwards in history did not score. And because of her stature, I felt like I needed to play a little bit more physical. She was 5'9", around 150 pounds, and I was 5'4", 120 pounds soaking wet. The ball was played into our vicinity, so we arrived at the same time from different vantage points. But due to the fact that the ball was bouncing and the height differential, she successfully knocked that ball forward. And her foot ended up carrying with momentum into mine, and I immediately started to spin in the opposite direction. My plant leg couldn't handle the torque. They talk about that infamous pop, and I knew immediately. It sounds like two rocks colliding together. I fell to the ground. I started writhing in pain as my teammates came and they tried to console me. And as much as it hurt, I needed an extra minute to take in the magnitude of what that injury meant for me. And it was then and there that I had to give myself permission to let go of a dream of starting and playing in my first ever Women's World Cup. I started asking teammates and trainers and coaches who the best orthopedic surgeons in the country were. I started going online and looking at message boards. And I was willing to move anywhere in the country in order to give myself the best shot at a smooth surgery, a quick recovery, and the best physical therapy all in the same place. I was already stationed out in Hermosa Beach, California with national team residency and decided to stay there. My next decision was the means of repair. And so I opted for an allograft, which is actually tissue from a donor. I felt like those things all together were gonna to give me the best shot in making the Olympic team, which was set to kick off in its opening game 15 months later. When the news broke that I had torn my ACL and that I wouldn't be playing in the Women's World Cup, I made the mistake of reading the comments. One person said, good, she shouldn't have been the starter anyway. Another said, she'll never make it back for the Olympics with the amount of talent on this team. I found a quote that really helped me through the recovery process. It was tell me I can't and then watch you work twice as hard to prove you wrong. And that became my motto. My very first day home from surgery, I was bedridden, my leg in a machine that kept it on constant motion. And when I wasn't doing that, I was icing. And that was the repetition that I consistently repeated. The only time that I got up out of the bed was to crutch myself to the bathroom. And not to mention that the very first time that I did that, I passed out on the toilet. Needless to say, I was completely unable to take care of myself, and I started to question whether or not I would ever be able to play soccer at a high level again. I was a mess, but luckily, my then boyfriend, now husband, who's also a professional athlete, said to me, Hev, you get one day. One day to feel sorry for yourself. Tomorrow is a brand new start. And so he was right. I threw myself one heck of a pity party for the rest of that day, but I woke up the next day with a brand new perspective because feeling sorry for myself was not gonna help me to get back on the field faster, and it was not gonna help me make the Olympic team. It was time to own my identity. Mentality had helped me to get through injuries before and was no doubt why I was close to playing 100 times for the U.S. Women's National Team. I showed up for that first therapy session the same way that I did for every practice. With a positive attitude, I was willing and able to soak up the information of my trainer, Omi Iwasaki. I was gonna put in my full effort and I was also gonna make sure to listen to my body so I didn't have any setbacks. 
As I started to forge ahead in that journey, there comes a time around the five month mark where your therapy's over and you're just asked to rest. My therapist had become my crutch, but he was ready for me to leave the nest and to learn how to fly again. I admit I was scared. I was unsure of myself without my therapist around. And I also had this void of not having soccer in my life for the very first time. But it was a great lesson to learn what we can control. All I had was time now. So I was gonna make up for last time. I started taking trips. I started going and seeing and doing things that I'd always dreamt of doing, but I had never been able to because I had been too busy playing soccer. And it also gave me a great opportunity to see my family and my friends who I so rarely saw because they were living on the East Coast. But after a month, my body was ready to start training again. And so I needed to find the best coach around to give me an opportunity to make that Olympic team. Luckily, James Galanis in New Jersey agreed to help me chase my dreams. And just like that quote said, we trained every day, twice a day. In the morning, it was three hours of ball work and working on my weaknesses so I could become more well-rounded. And in the evening, it was just skills. And when I could start running again, we added a third training session because I had to do more than my competition to make that team. Fitness and speed had always been my specialty, but those things weren't gonna come to the very end. In the meantime, I was training like a machine and my confidence was growing every single day. I was envisioning myself as a starting right back during the Olympics. And believe me, there were definitely days that I never thought that I would reach my goal. But all I kept telling myself was just don't stop. That very first time that I had an opportunity to put that USA jersey on and get my first start, I stepped onto that field with a brand new appreciation for the sport that I love. I had no fear as I went sliding on the wet ground into my first slide tackle. And when I was able to get into the attack, it was like heaven compared to those tedious bike rides or running up a hill against myself. My performance in that game solidified my spot. If I wouldn't have been desperate, I wouldn't have made the Olympic team. If I wouldn't have won gold, I still would have been proud of my personal growth. By the way, I started and played every minute of the Olympics, and I played the best soccer of my life. And when I stood up there on that podium, I had a brand new appreciation for the sport that I love and the journey that I had been on. If I wouldn't have given myself permission to let go of a dream of playing in the World Cup, I wouldn't have been able to set new goals to play in the Olympics. By owning my identity, it showed me that mentality leads to success in any endeavor. By learning what we can control, it showed me how to enjoy life without soccer. And as with anything, don't ever stop because grit and resilience are the secret sauce that help you go from being a world-class athlete to being a world-class champion. And it's amazing what our brains and our bodies are capable of when belief supersedes doubt and when love of self conquers fear of trying.